Welcome to Wonderslate. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. Topic for today's video is Kingdom Plante. What is Kingdom Plante? The word Plante is a taxonomic group that includes land plants and green algae. Kingdom Plante includes multicellular, mostly autotrophic eukaryotes that usually conduct photosynthesis. Kingdom Plante is classified into five subgroups based on three criteria. Subgroups of Kingdom Plante are Thalophyta, Bryophyta, Pteridophyta, Gymnosperms, and Angiosperms. Now let's study about the first subgroup of Kingdom Plante that is Thalophyta. Thalophyta Thalophyta is the first division of the plant kingdom. Thalophytes are a polyphyletic group of non-mobile organisms that are grouped together on the basis of similarity of characteristics but do not share a common ancestor. It includes two subdivision, the algae, and fungi. Besides, Thalophyta also includes slime molds, lichens, and bacteria. Characteristics of Thalophyta Characteristics of Thalophyta are, plant bodies thallus. It is not differentiated into root, stem, and leaves. They are autotrophic in nature. They are usually found in moist or wet places. This is due to the absence of true roots and vascular tissue that is needed to transport water and minerals. Hence they are found in moist or wet places. Absence of vascular tissue. Unlike other plants, xylem and phloem are absent. Sex organs are simple, single-celled. There is no embryo formation after fertilization. Examples of thalophyta are algae, eulothrix, chara, fungi, and lichens. Classification of Thalophyta Thalophyta is classified into two subdivisions, algae and fungi. Algae exist in environments ranging from oceans, rivers, and lakes to ponds. Algae are usually green, but they can be found in a variety of different colors. Algae are classified into three types. Red algae, green algae, and brown algae. Almost all the algae are aquatic. The majority of algae are in aquatic habitat freshwater or marine. Some algae are terrestrial also. Found in moist places. Mode of reproduction can be sexual as well as asexual. Fungi is a eukaryotic organism that includes microorganisms such as yeasts, molds, and mushrooms. Fungi are eukaryotic, non-vascular, non-motile, and heterotrophic organisms. Fungi lack chlorophyll and hence cannot perform photosynthesis. The fungi have no embryonic stage. They develop from the spores. Fungi produce a chemical called pheromone which leads to sexual reproduction in fungi. This is about Thalophyta. Now let's study about the second subdivision of Kingdom Plantae that is Bryophyta. What are Bryophytes? Bryophytes are small, non-vascular land plants that require water for reproduction. As bryophytes are simpler plants, most have no internal means of transporting water or nutrients. They are often said to have leaves but these are not equivalent to the leaves of vascular plants. These plants do not produce flowers, and therefore never produce seeds. Plants that don are number 39. T flower are called cryptogam and reproduce by spore production, with other cryptogams being fungi, slime molds, and ferns. The process by which they produce spores is termed alternation of generations. Characteristics of bryophytes Bryophytes are primitive land plants that grow on moist shady places. They prefer moist, cool, and shady places to grow. Few of them grow in water and others in bogs, moist walls, rocks, and tree trunks. Though they started land life, they require the presence of water to complete their life cycle for the movement of motile male gametes. They are predominantly amphibious in nature, hence called amphibians of the plant kingdom. Sexual reproduction is zoogamous type. The sex organs of bryophytes are called gametangia. Gametangia are multicellular with a sterile jacket. Female gametangium is known as archegonium and male gametangium is known as antheridium. Fertilization is possible in the presence of water. 
the egg is fertilized by the actively swimming motile spermatozoids while it is still within the archegonium. Classification of Bryophytes Bryophyta is divided into three classes. Mosses, class Bryopsida. Liverworts, class Marshantiopsida. Hornworts, class Anthocerotopsida. The gametophytes of mosses have typical leaf-like structures. They have cells that are capable of absorbing water. However, specialized vascular plant roots are absent. Mosses are only one cell thick except at the midrib. Liverworts have flattened gametophytes with lobes looks like those of liver hens, the combination liverwort. The lobed liverworts are the best known representatives of this phylum. The physiological and biological systems are less complex in the liverworts as compared to the mosses. In liverworts, both, sexual and asexual, reproduction can take place. The sporophyte of hornworts is small in size and it resembles tiny green broom handles rising from filmy gametophytes. They are usually less than 2 cm in diameter. The hornworts have stomata and it is also capable of carrying out a photosynthesis reaction. Hence, it provides much of the energy needed for growth and also for reproduction. The cells of hornworts usually have a single chloroplast and it is important during the energy production by photosynthesis. This is about bryophyta. Now let's study about the third subdivision of kingdom plantae that is pteridophyta. Pteridophyta. Pteridophyta, the name was originally given to those groups of plants that have well-developed pinnate or frond-like leaves. Pteridophytes are cryptogams which have well-developed vascular tissue. These plants are also known as vascular cryptogams or snakes of the plant kingdom. They are represented by about 400 living and fossil genera and some 10,500 species. Characteristics of Pteridophyta Pteridophytes are seedless, and they procreate through spores. They don't have to conduct tissues for transportation of water and minerals. Instead, the water and minerals flow from the surface of the plant cell to the cell in the plant's body. This is also one of the reasons why these plants need a constantly moist environment to survive. The majority of the living pteridophytes are terrestrial and prefer to grow in cool, moist, and shady places. Vascular tissue is present in stem and root. It consists of xylem and phloem. Xylem consists of tracheids only and phloem has only sieve tubes. Reproduction takes place by means of spores that are produced inside sporangia. Classification of Pteridophyta The three different types of pteridophytes are ferns, horsetails, lycophytes. A fern is a member of a group of vascular plants that reproduce via spores and have neither seeds nor flowers. They differ from mosses by being vascular which is having specialized tissues that conduct water and nutrients and in having life cycles in which the sporophyte is the dominant phase. Hostales are very primitive plants belonging to the genus Equisetum, vascular plants that reproduce by spores in a similar fashion to ferns. The plant consists of long, hollow, narrow stem segments with minuscule, non-photosynthetic leaves. The lycophytes which compose the phylum Lycophyta, are one of four phyla of seedless plants having vascular, or conducting, tissue. The living lycophytes are all small and herbaceous, whereas the extinct lycophytes included large trees, which were important in the formation of coal. This is about Pteridophyta. Now let's study about the fourth subdivision of kingdom plantae that is Gymnosperms. Gymnosperms Gymnosperms are a group of plants that produce seeds not enclosed within the ovary or fruit. The word gymnosperm comes from the Greek words gymnos means naked and sperma means seed, hence known as naked seeds. Gymnosperms are the seed-producing plants, but unlike angiosperms, they produce seeds without fruits. These plants develop on the surface of scales or leaves, or at the end of stalks forming a cone-like structure. Basically. Gymnosperms are plants in which the ovules are not enclosed within the ovary wall, unlike the angiosperms. It remains exposed before and after fertilization, and before developing into a seed. 
The stem of gymnosperms can be branched or unbranched. The thick cuticle, needle-like leaves, and sunken stomata reduce the rate of water loss in these plants. Characteristics of gymnosperms Gymnosperms are seed plants adapted to live on land, thus, they are autotrophic, photosynthetic organisms that tend to conserve water. They have a vascular system used for the transportation of water and nutrient that includes roots, xylem, and phloem. Gymnosperms have needle-like or scale-like leaves and no flowers. The leaves have a waxy cuticle that reduces water loss and helps snow to slide off easily, reducing the weight load on the branches. Most gymnosperms are evergreens meaning they don't lose their leaves easily but there are a few species like the larch and tamarack that are deciduous. The reproductive system of gymnosperm plants is located in the cones. The male gametophytes produce two gametes, but only one of them is functional. They are not differentiated into the ovary, style, and stigma. Classification of Gymnosperms Gymnosperms are classified into four types, Cicadophyta, Ginkophyta, Gnetophyta, Coniferophyta. Cicadophyta are individual plants that are either all male or female. Cycads are seed-bearing plants. These plants usually have large compound leaves, thick trunks and small leaflets which are attached to a single central stem. Ginkophyta has only one living species. The ginkgo trees are characterized by their large size and their fan-like leaves. Also, ginkgo trees have a large number of applications ranging from medicine to cooking. Ginkgo leaves are ingested as a remedy for memory-related disorders like Alzheimer's. Neotophytes usually consist of tropical plants, trees, and shrubs. They are characterized by flowery leaves that have a soft coating. Neotophytes differ from other members of this class as they possess vessel elements in their xylem. Coniferophyta is the most commonly known species among the gymnosperms family. They are evergreen, hence they do not shed their leaves in the winter. These are mainly characterized by male and female cones that form needle-like structures. This is about gymnosperms. Now let's study about the fifth subdivision of kingdom plantae that is angiosperms. Angiosperms Angiosperms are vascular plants with stems, roots, and leaves. The seeds of the angiosperm are found in a flower. The seeds develop inside the plant organs and form fruit. Hence, they are also known as flowering plants. Angiosperms are the most advanced and beneficial group of plants. They can grow in various habitats as trees, herbs, shrubs, and bushes. Angiosperms have a unique relationship with animals that other plants do not. Many angiosperm species rely on the interaction between animals and their flowers for reproduction. As insects, birds, or other animals move from one flower to another feeding on nectar, they commonly distribute pollen from flower to flower as they go which leads to plants being pollinated and seeds to be produced. Animals can also play a role in the dispersal of many angiosperm species by feeding on the fruit of the plant and carrying the seeds to new locations. Characteristics of Angiosperms Angiosperms have diverse characteristics. All plants have flowers at some stage in their life. The flowers are the reproductive organs for the plant, providing them with a means of exchanging genetic information. Angiosperms have very well-developed conducting tissues. These tissues include the xylem and the phloem arranged in the form of vascular bundles. The xylem contains vessels. Similarly, phloem consists of sieve tubes and companion cells. The root system of angiosperms is also very complex. The roots also contain cortex, phloem, xylem, and epidermis. They have root hair that helps in better absorption of water minerals from the soil. Absorption takes place by diffusion and active transport. The flowers are one of the most differentiating features of angiosperms. They are the reproductive structures of angiosperms. The flower has thalamus that is a short axis and four walls of sporophylls arranged on the thalamus. The four walls of floral leaves include calyx, corolla, andresium and gymnasium. 
The stamens produce pollen that helps in pollination when they reach the stigma. A pollen tube containing non-motile male gametes is produced after the germination of a pollen grain. The pollen tube reaches the ovary through a style. Ovaries of an angiosperm contain a new cellulose and two integuments containing a micropyle. Closed carpels that enclose the ovules help in the prevention of self-fertilization. Classification of angiosperms Angiosperms are classified into two types, monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Monocots have only one seed leaf inside the seed coat. It is often only a thin leaf because the endosperm to feed the new plant is not inside the seed leaf. Dicots have two seed leaves inside the seed coat. They are usually rounded and fat because they contain the endosperm to feed the embryo plant. When a monocot seed germinates, it produces a single leaf. It is usually long and narrow, like the adult leaf. When a dicot germinates, it produces two seed leaves. They contain the food for the new plant, so they are usually fatter than the true leaves. The first true leaves are often a different shape. The stems of monocots are usually unbranched and fleshy. The stems of dicots are usually tough. They can grow wider each year and are often branched. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any suggestion for us feel free to leave comments. If you liked the video and want to see more of it hit the thumbs up and don't forget to click on subscribe button to get more updates of the future videos.